Welcome to our worship from St. Paul's Anglican Church in Uxbridge. As we gather together on this glorious feast of Ascension Day, it is good to have each of you here with us today. And especially if this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome. We gather together virtually, but we always remember that we are united together by the power of the Holy Spirit through the gift of our faith in Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. And together we are united in our relationships with God. That is a gift, especially during this time when we are physically distanced from one another, our friends, our families, and even our neighbors. Let's gather together to pray, to sing, to hear God's word, to reflect on this glorious day. Let's take a moment of quiet as we begin our worship today. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. May his grace and peace be with us. May he fill our hearts with joy.
Clap your hands. Let your spirits rejoice. God has done wondrous things for us. Praise God to the highest heaven. Christ has blessed our lives with his presence and his teachings. We have joyous work to do for our God. And God is with us in all that we say and in everything we do. We can do this work with confidence. Christ is with us in all that we say and in everything we do. We don't have to be afraid to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, because the Holy Spirit is with us in all that we say and in everything that we do. So friends, let us sing, let us rejoice. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, the Father, Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. surprises as we gaze into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground, place our feet on the pathways of peace and hope, draw our attention from the vision of the Lord rising to the heavens to be with you, and help us to focus on the ministries that you would have us do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you in all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, 
he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. spoken to us, and to hear your calling inspiring us in our discipleship as followers of the risen and descended Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Today, this Feast of Ascension is a significant day that in many ways doesn't get the attention that it rightly deserves, even though it is a major feast day in our church year. The Ascension was significant 2,000 years ago, and it is equally significant today in our lives and in the vocation and ministry we are called to as followers of Jesus in our own time. In fact, I'd venture to say that the Ascension is right up there with Jesus' incarnation, his crucifixion, and his resurrection, even though it can so easily get lost and in some cases not even be acknowledged. We're grateful to Luke because in his writing of the Gospel and continuing with the Acts of the Apostles, he gives us a full account of all that happened, what Jesus said, the reaction of his disciples, the message that God sent to them. 
The ascension was a pinnacle moment for Luke. So much so that his gospel ended with it and his sequel with it began with the ascension. On the one hand, we can imagine the grief the disciples must have felt, experiencing yet again the loss of Jesus in their midst as he was taken from them. Especially after the glorious 40 days they'd spent together since his resurrection. What a roller coaster experience of emotions. And yet, on the other hand, we are told of the joy that they felt as they worshiped in the temple because they knew it wasn't all over. And they anticipated the promise of the Holy Spirit who would come and dwell among them. Well, on the one hand, we could step back and and look at what happened through the eyes of the disciples and their experience in that particular moment. However, the ascension has real significance today, too. It isn't just in what it was about for Jesus' disciples described in Luke, but equally, it is about today. For you and me, For us together as the church right now in 2021. In our creed we say, He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. That's a doctrinal statement of what we believe. But what does it really mean for us to make that claim? How does that statement of faith impact us in our day-to-day living? Well, one thing I thought of as I was preparing is that today is about being launched and in more ways than what is obvious. Launched. Jesus was launched back to his place at God's right hand, having completed what he had been sent to earth to accomplish. But equally, the disciples were launched in their witnessing and building up of the church, commissioned for the ministry that lay ahead of them. But it doesn't end there. Furthermore, we are launched in our ministries as the church today, where we are at this moment in time. We are commissioned, too, to be faithful in embracing our identity as followers of the crucified, risen, and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Just because Jesus returned to his heavenly throne of grace, that in no way meant that he would be idle and uninvolved in what was yet to come, even to this very day. I read this quote. If we're not careful, we might mistake meaning Jesus' ascension to sound like a kind of retirement send-off. Jesus has finished his work and now sits back to enjoy the fruits of his labor. That couldn't be further from the truth. Notice what Luke begins with in the Acts reading. Dear Theophilus, in the first volume of this book, in other words, in the Gospel, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the Apostles. Now, the implication in that is that Jesus started something. And now Luke was going to go on to tell the story of what happened next. Jesus would remain intimately connected with the mission that he initiated in coming to earth as a human being. And as such, Jesus' ascension wasn't an ending or the concluding of Jesus' ministry. It was a transitional moment of grace where the baton was passed and would continue to be passed on from generation to generation as the church faithfully embraced the witness of the good news of Jesus that we are called to live and that we are called to proclaim in everything we say and do. As discouraging as it may have been for the disciples, as with all the details of the story, it had to be this way. There was no choice but for Jesus to physically leave this earth and return to his seat at God's right hand. 
Jesus may have been physically absent from them, but don't forget the promise he made to them, that in his leaving, he would send upon them the Holy Spirit. That was good news. Good news that Jesus would never really leave them, but rather he would continue to be around them and in them and working through them, but in a different way. He would still teach them and inspire them and empower them and enlighten them. He would nourish them, walk alongside them and instruct them. He would care for them, advocate on their behalf. He would be their companion on the journey. Through this moment, and all Jesus said before he ascended, the disciples then, and we disciples today, are affirmed all the more in who Jesus is for us as God's Son. When we realize again who Jesus is, the Ascended One, the Divine One, the significance of Jesus having chosen us, and that's what he said, he chose us, we look at that role differently as God's story of faith and faithfulness continues to be advanced through the likes of you and me. The story of God's redemption since the creation of the world and throughout all of God's interaction and God's relationship with his creation is one story. And we are part of that story today as it continues to unfold right now. Like the disciples, we may feel a bit overwhelmed, even daunted, and not equipped to accept the baton that Jesus is passing to us. As we, in turn, offer ourselves, our lives, all we do to furthering the gospel. As we, too, witness to the mystery of God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy through Jesus Christ. But let's never, never forget that just as Jesus promised his disciples the Holy Spirit, so too God promises us the gift of the Holy Spirit that is always there around us, as much as it was for them, and is always there in us, and thankfully is always working through us too. Another facet of the Ascension story that we can't ignore is the other promise that Jesus made to his disciples. Remember, they stood there staring into the empty sky and suddenly two men appeared in white robes. They said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus who was taken up from among you to heaven will come as certainly and as mysteriously as he left. Think about the acclamation we make as part of the great thanksgiving in our celebrations of the Eucharist. We say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. But isn't it true that Christ comes to us over and over again through the gift of a song we hear, or a walk through the woods, or a visit with a friend, or a sunset, or a worship service? or when we can do so when we gather around God's holy table to share in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Day to day, we need to be attentive, we need to be aware, and out of that, we need to be receptive to the glory of God and the presence of God. Or we may well miss when he comes and makes himself known and available to us. Finally, Jesus' ascension was a living out of the great reversal. The victim becomes the victor. The least becomes the greatest. The head once crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. God and faith may have seemed to be, have been in jeopardy, but they ultimately triumph. Yes, the great reversal. God's great reversal. Uh, this is a quote that I read that supports that. The ascension of Jesus was the supreme political event of world history. He ascended not so much to a place as to an office. He departed from the arena of humiliation and suffering to enter into his glory. 
He in one moment leapfrogged from the status of despised Galilean teacher to the cosmic king of the universe, jumping over the heads of Pilate, Herod, and Caesar Augustus. The ascension catapulted Jesus to the right hand of God, where he was enthroned as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We today, through our lives, through our ministries, are called to continue living out gospel politics, where God can continue that great reversal of all time, when the poor become rich, the broken are healed, the hungry are fed, despair is replaced by hope, and the downtrodden are lifted up. The question that makes this day relevant to us is, how can we take what God has done in Jesus and what God has accomplished over the centuries and become part of the legacy of what God is doing right now for those who come after us so that through us the story of God's redemption continues and not just continues, but flourishes too. And remember, we're not left to do it all on our own, but rather with God's help through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Feast of Ascension Day is a glorious feast that has many layers, that is relevant for all time, including right now. God affirms the coming of Christ. God affirms the glory of God's kingdom that we long for, that we hope for, that we anticipate. But equally, the Feast of the Ascension is at the same time about the here and now, our faithfully accepting our gospel mandate to live the kingdom message here today in our lives. The Feast of the Ascension gives us a glimpse of the vision of the glory of God that helps us to appreciate the gift of God's redemption through his Son, Jesus Christ, reminding us that we are part of the redemption story. In truth, we can no longer go on with life as usual. Instead, we are called to press on with joy, even in the difficult moments like a pandemic, because there is ministry to be done. And through our baptisms, we have said yes. Yes, we want to be part of the story. We want to be part of Jesus' story. We want to be part of the building up of God's kingdom. Let's not think on that as being onerous, but rather as the privilege that it is because we know personally and we know intimately the living Christ, crucified, risen, ascended, seated at the right hand of God, but equally present right here in our lives, in this moment, in this time. He has and he continues to make a difference in our lives, and through us, he desires to continue to make a difference in the world he created. May it indeed be so. Amen.
around that potentially compromise our fragile promises to you. God of all grace, encourage those in political leadership around the world, in our country of Canada, in our province of Ontario and our community of Uxbridge, that they may work for justice, mercy and peace for all people and all of your creation. God of all grace, Rest your healing spirit upon all who are coping with chronic or life-threatening illness, and give rest to all who care for them. We pray especially for all who have been diagnosed with COVID-19, especially those in our intensive care units struggling for their lives. We pray for those growing weary and tired from their months of working on the front lines as essential workers. We pray for those who feel isolated and alone, and all those who struggle with their mental health. We pray for all those receiving their vaccines, giving us hope for the time that is to come. May you lay our, your hand upon them and strengthen them. God of all grace, gladden our hearts knowing that those we love who have died are now risen with all the saints and descended. May they rest in your eternal peace. God of all grace, empower the leaders of your church with spiritual wisdom as they cope with the various challenges in their ministries. We pray especially for Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan bishop, and Rasilla, our area bishop. God of grace, continue to inspire us in our ministry at St. Paul's as we care for each other and minister to our wider community of Uxbridge. Continue to open our eyes to opportunities to live out our shared discipleship 
as we serve in your name. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember and give thanks this week for Mark and Beth, Martin and Pauline, and their families. Holy God, as we cast our anxiety upon you, you rekindle our desire to reflect upon and rejoice in your presence, and you renew our willingness to faithfully live out our baptismal identity. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious and holy God, on this Feast of Ascension, you call us to live out our resurrection faith in service, offering peace and justice, hope and healing to all whom we meet. It is easy for us to lift the names of those near and dear to us in prayer in our worship services. We want your healing mercies for all who are ill, all who mourn, those who are lost and alone, especially during these pandemic days. We want to rejoice in prayer with those who have received so many blessings in their lives. All these things are important to us, and we know they are important to you. Help us to live the prayers we ask. Help us to be agents of healing and mercy, of peace and hope. We offer our lives and prayers to you in the name of our ascended Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. As Christ has loved us and prayed for us, may we know and trust in God's peace. May we bring Christ's loving words to all we meet. May we know that Christ is with us in all that we say and do. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you, those you love, those you serve, and those you pray for. This day, this holy season of Easter, throughout this COVID-19 pandemic, and always. Amen. The power and love of Jesus Christ is with us. We are now sent forth to be his witnesses in the world, bringing the good news, healing through our ministries of justice and peace. May we go from our time of worship today in confidence and boldness and in the power and in the love of God. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless our risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs> 